Welcome back to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. It is almost exactly a day and a half since the end of Sunday's deadly terrorist attack on a gay nightclub in Orlando. Let's get right to Senator Dianne Feinstein of California. She's the vice chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator Feinstein, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. You're welcome, Jake. So you've been briefed. Uh, what is the latest you can tell us on this investigation and what we now know about this terrorist? Well, what I can tell you is that uh, the FBI has been going through his uh, cell phone computer and thus far has found uh, nothing uh, that relates him to any other kind of activity or communication. So we'll have to wait and see till that's over. Um, I don't believe there's been any kind of a t intelligence failure assorted um, connected with this. Um, I think in my mind, what it points out is the enormous unpredictability of exactly who is going to be stigmatized and moved to this kind of jihadism. And here's a young man um, who had a good job, who held it for nine years, uh, who I gather was able to keep that job for nine years and who yet went off the track with a hostility mm -hmm. that's really beyond anything I've seen in terms of the numbers of people he killed yeah. and shot. So I hear you saying that there's not an intelligence failure and, and obviously the only person responsible for this horrific act is the terrorist himself. But just asking the question, he was known to the FBI. He had been interviewed in 2013 and in 2014 about possible terror ties. He was flagged then as a possible ISIS sympathizer. If that's not an intelligence failure, what is it? Should they have been following up more? Should they have been paying closer attention? What do you think? Well, as you know, the FBI interviewed him on two occasions over different years, found nothing there, and um, uh, ended the investigation. During the investigation, he was put, as I understand it, on the terrorist watch list. Uh, when the investigation ended, he went off the list. I think we have to take a look at that. I also believe um, then I happen to be uh, the main author of a piece of legislation that was written actually by the Bush Justice Department that provides criteria for the Attorney General to prohibit the transfer of a weapon to certain people. And I think that that bill, it's called No Guns for Terrorists, uh, should be passed. Um, it's just terrible that we terrorists can buy a gun in this country and not be and and they're not on any kind of watch list. Uh, it's easy to go through a background check. At least 91 percent of the people uh, who have been tested by background checks have gone through them. But I think this bill would be very very helpful. And if you want to know what it says, I'd be happy to tell you. But essentially, it gives certain criteria that the attorney general uh, mm -hmm. has the discretion to prohibit sale of a weapon and put that individual on a terrorist watch list. But as far as we know, Senator, and obviously I wish I could go back in time and stop this man from doing what he oh, did. Oh, so but, do I. But, but, but as far as we know, um, he, he didn't have a criminal record. Uh, he had never committed a terrorist act. He may have been a terrorist sympathizer, but the FBI ultimately decided that he wasn't enough of one to keep an eye on him. So would your law have even affected this case? Well, it would have certainly given the attorney general uh, the authority to keep him on the watch list. That's all I can say, that if he or she, in this case, she felt that there were enough, enough information from those two investigations to fulfill the criteria in this bill. And I believe there is a very good likelihood that she would have put him back on the watch list. And that would have prevented him from buying a gun in this country. All right, Senator Dianne Feinstein, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. your time as always. Thank you, Jake. The Orlando terrorist told co-workers he wanted to be a martyr and his family was connected to Al Qaeda. All this before he was interviewed and actually put on that FBI watch list. Did the FBI miss red flags? Then, 